and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And today my guest is Margaret Wilson, and she's going to tell us a little bit about some of the history and the ongoing support for that history at the Aberdeen neighborhood. Welcome, Margaret. It's good to see you. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. You guys are busy. You do um, a lot of activities to support what's going on um, at Aberdeen at the museum and, and some of the other things. Absolutely. Um, I'm president of the Aberdeen Gardens uh, Historical Foundation. And each year we have a you know, fundraiser. We raise money to support the activities that the association, Aberdeen Gardens Historic and Civic Association, uh, puts on. Um, that's our basis for being the foundation. That was organized in 1998. It's the 501c3 arm of the association. So the nonprofit arm. The nonprofit arm, yes. Now, tell me just a little bit, um, <clears throat> What is so special and historic about Aberdeen? I think a lot of people out there hear it, or they hear Aberdeen Museum, but they don't really know how that neighborhood got its start and, and what you guys continue to do today to share that history. Well, Aberdeen Gardens was built in 1934 with a grant given by the government to Hampton Institute at the time. The first family moved in on November the 1st, 1937. And since that time, there are still descendants living in Aberdeen that their parents started and they keep coming back and living in the original homes. What's so unique about it is 158 historic homes in Aberdeen Gardens. We were a village. We were a total family. It did not matter where you live, but if you had parents, 158 parents, <laughs> okay? And that's what makes it so unique and out of the 13 resettlement communities that were built for blacks during the Roosevelt era. We're the only one that's remaining. So just a little bit more about that. So this was a Roosevelt initiative. It was also probably a WPA or, you know, one of the Depression era things. But it was specifically for black families. Correct. And it was designed by a black, black architect. Okay. Right, Hilliard and, Robinson. Mm -hmm. And... Um, as I said, there were 13. The other 12 were farms. Aberdeen was the only urban one, and it was the model resettlement community. And urban, when you say <coughs> urban, like Aberdeen right now is surrounded by houses. It's all neighborhood. But, but at the time, um, those, those other surrounding neighborhoods probably weren't there. Y'all were in the middle of Elizabeth City County in a much more rural setting, I would think. Absolutely. When we say urban, we mean it was not a farm. Right, right. It, they were not farm. Urban for 1934 right. is different than urban <laughs> in 2012. Uh, there was, they weren't farms mm -hmm. as such. And that's, unfortunately, some of the farms that were the resettlements have not been taken care of and Families have sold the property, et cetera. But Aberdeen has stayed intact. And what makes us special are the people. We are a family. We get together. And it's like, oh, home week. You, you know? have so many gatherings. I mean, oh my gosh, there's Dean Day, there's your big fundraiser, there's... Um, we have the breakfast every in February. We have the gala in October. That's an annual event. We do, uh, we have the uh, fish fries during some parts of the year. Uh, Heritage Day is in June when we try to invite people to come back to enjoy the heritage that they had when they lived in Aberdeen. Those are the kind of things that we do. And currently we are, are planning a learning research center at the administration building because that's next door to the museum, which is at 57 Mary Peak Boulevard. The administration building is at 55 Mary Peak Boulevard. We give tours and what the house, it's a house. It's a replica of an original home is the museum. Of course, the federal government does not qualify it as a museum, but to us it is. Right. And that's the tour that we give. And we So you've taken one of the original buildings yes. and um, furnished it like it would have been at the time in the in the 30s. Correct. And kind of show people what that life was like. Right. And uh, the furniture was donated by residents who lived in Aberdeen and some families still live there. Um, we do the tours um, whenever people call. They buy our appointment right now because we're all volunteers. Right. We don't have a staff, and we try to keep it open at least two or three days a week, but it's better if they call and ask for a tour, and we will do so. So while we're talking about that, Margaret, do you want to give us the phone number so people out there who might want a tour can give you a call? Yeah, the, the new telephone number is 251 
2283. We just got a landline, so I had to remember. That's very exciting, yeah. And that, that number is for the administration building, and the alternate number is 722-2345. Okay. So if they call either one of those numbers, we will arrange a tour for them at any time. Um, and if there's a group of people, like 20 or more, we try to, uh, you know, have another person doing the tour. Anything under 20, we can do with one person. Mm -hmm. So tell me um, again a little bit more about the original families who who settled in that area. Um, some of them are still in the neighborhood or at least in Hampton. And you yourself um, have a little bit of claim to fame. Well, I try not to tell everyone that. Yeah, I was born in Aberdeen. I was born at, on Langston Boulevard. And if I don't tell you, the next group will tell you. <laughs> uh, my, fam my grandparents were the first family to move into Aberdeen Gardens. And, and I, I like the fact that they were very much a part of Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. And people remember them and, and fondly, and I, I, I'm grateful that they, you know, have given them that honor. And you were the first baby born there, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I know you're shy, but it's, you know, it's a wonderful fact because it tells the history um, and and the yeah. connection, you know? And I have a, a big passion. Even though I'm not living there anymore, I am in Aberdeen pretty much every day. For some reason, I'm always in Aberdeen. And I try to work at the administration building at least two, twice a week. Uh, right now, we're trying to put our historical documents in order, you know, cataloging, archiving, that kind of thing to make sure we're putting them in books where people can come and, and read all about it from the beginning, from the 1933 up until the present time. So for a personal story, what was your grandparents' involvement? You know, what were they doing? How did they get selected or have the opportunity to move to well, Aberdeen Well, everyone, Gardens. they were handpicked pretty much because everyone who moved into Aberdeen had to have a physical, the entire family, because of um, wow. tuberculosis and some of the other things were very prevalent at that time. Mm. So if they did not pass that, then they could not move in there. Uh, and the homes were given to them according to the size of the family. Okay, so we had three, four, three rooms, four rooms, and five rooms. Okay. And depending on the number of pets, at the time they moved in. All right. Okay, that made a difference. Now what they did after they moved in, because we had some who eventually had like 11 children in a three room house. But I mean, that didn't matter when you were part of it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it. And when you look back at it now, and if anyone ever noticed a fire out there, the homes are double bricked. The outside doesn't burn, inside does. Mm. There's some uniqueness about those homes. We had indoor plumbing, indoor heat, and hardwood floors. Wow, which was that's very pretty unique. unusual in the 30s. Right, in the 30s, right, mm -hmm. and very much so. So we were a little special. We felt like we were a, lot, a, a little special anyway. Well, so we just still tell do. me a little personal story about your grandparents. Just, you know, what they did or what it meant to them or, you know. How, how special um, they were. My grandmother helped people in the neighborhood, but my grandfather worked at the shipyard. But we also had a farm on uh, Pine Chapel and Queen Street. So most of the time we spent not just at the garden because it is Aberdeen Gardens. Mm -hmm. Everyone pretty much had a garden behind the homes in Aberdeen. But we had a larger farm over on the um, West Queen Street and Pine Chapel. So between the two, that's what we did. And, and they were just active people in the neighborhood. My grandfather was very quiet, but my grandmother was pretty active. They belonged to Little Zion Baptist Church, which mm -hmm. is where we grew, I grew up. So and it was just, a na I mean, they were just neighborhood. They fed a lot of people. My grandmother opened her doors, and if someone was hungry, you just came in to eat. It didn't matter. And how many children did they have? They had four when they moved in. Their youngest child was four years old when I was born. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and so I grew up in a, neighbor, in a household that had a span of ages in there. They mm -hmm. had three sons and a daughter. Now, is that one of the things that is also kind of unique about Aberdeen Gardens to this day, is that multi-generational element? Absolutely. The next per group um, coming on, the Van family, I think there are about three or four families of them living in the <laughs> neighborhood. Um, the Jackson family, he's living in home. The Burrell family, um, the oldest child is still living in that home. Uh, we have another family, uh, Roundtree, her son has bought a home. So yeah, the people come back.
-hmm. It's like, it's a draw. It's like a magnet to come back to Aberdeen. Because now you went away community. for a while. You went away to college. Yes, I went to college and I married someone who was in the Air Force. We traveled and when uh, he's deceased, he died and I was working at the Pentagon and when I retired, I always knew and he knew he wanted to come back to Hampton. Aww. And I knew it was no doubt that I was going to always come back home. Mm -hmm. it, there's a draw about being in Aberdeen. <laughs> That's really, really special. Yeah. yeah, and I enjoy being here and I enjoy working with the people and remembering the things that we did. Mm -hmm. um, we get together sometime and reminisce. It's kind of fun to sit around and talk about it. But now what's also interesting is you and, and the foundation are not just about the history. You are working now with... Um, with the next generation yes. about after school or e even with some of your seniors with computer classes. Tell me a little bit about what your goals are for that project. Well, Dead Learning Research Center is going to be is, is upstairs in the administration building. We have the computers already set up and by the end of the year we hope we can have established the policies and procedures for doing it where we will uh, have the hours, the volunteers, and the type of things that the students can do. The parent, um, residents can come up and look up family history or any of those things but we are we're trying to get that set up now for the for the community to come in and use and to me that's a big project not everyone has a computer and some who mm -hmm. have it don't they don't have internet right. so that's what we're going to supply uh, uh, afford them the opportunity to come to do that mm -hmm. and that I think is what's you know continues to make Aberdeen Gardens this incredibly special place is that you're not just looking back you know, you're, you have this tr tremendous history, but that's not enough. You're still building forward and maintaining those community ties. Yeah, we're, we're also trying to establish a youth advisory board where we are asking, we're going to be uh, asking some students to join us, to tell us what they would like to have in the neighborhood, what are their concerns, what are their problems, but what could they bring to us to continue the history? Because that's the toughest part, is trying to get young people. And I don't mean just the teenagers or the 20-year-olds, we, in my era, the, the 30 and 40-year-olds, to start taking the task that we have started. Mm -hmm. Because we go, we want them to be able to continue to keep the history going, the uniqueness of that community going. And some of that is you do have so much of it documented. It's in the museum. You've got things written down. You've had photographs donated. I mean, you guys have compiled that history. But it is it is a little hard to get that younger generation to feel. I mean, they've grown up in a different world than the world you grew yes. up in. And and to maintain that connection is probably a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, and we have a, a website. It's called Aberdeen Gardens org mm -hmm. or anyone wanted to go online they can go to Aberdeen Gardens Hampton Virginia and get a lot of the history although some of it is not as accurate as we would like it to be of course you know different people have put it in Yeah, when you deal with reminiscences you have that person's perspective and that person's memory mm -hmm. and it may not be exactly right um, what someone else remembers but when we do the tours we try to correct and give the right information mm -hmm. um, part of what we tell them is about the rent rent was eleven dollars or fifteen dollars the most expensive house was $3,300. So they were rented at the beginning. In the beginning, and then Mr. Walker, who was our, our first and only resident manager, William Walker, whose son was a um, former ambassador to South Africa, and he supports us uh, a little bit now with the student, you know, helping us to get a student there. Um, he arranged with the federal government for people to purchase the homes after a period of time. And we did have two families who bought their homes originally, mm -hmm. but most of them were renters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, th is there anything I've forgotten to ask you? No, just tell people to come see us. If come they can't it. go anywhere else, they can always come to Aberdeen Gardens. We will show them a good time and show them what a pleasure it is to live in Aberdeen Gardens. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming by today, Margaret. It is a very special neighborhood, and the fact that you have this ongoing foundation and events and support, you know, the history of the past and, and the future generations is very impressive. Thank you very much for having me. Thank mm -hmm. you. And thank you for watching Round Robin.